season of the Touchdown Club Coaches Show. Thomas Sella, Max Rotnecker, talking Wagner football coach. Not the start to the season that uh, we want it, but uh, what are some silver linings that you're taking away from last Thursday's game? Uh, the, the silver lining is that we played a game that was somewhat normal. Uh, you know, it was a great environment up at Buffalo. Uh, really disappointed in our effort uh, in the way we played. Uh, Buffalo's a hell of a football team, a 10-win team. Uh, but I was hoping and, and uh, thinking that we would be competitive in the game, and, and we weren't. Now, uh, looking at the roster, there's a lot of youth um, on the team. Thinking about your specialists, all of them were, are, were freshmen in their first game. How important is it to, to get your feet wet, so to speak, and get on a game field um, before conference play starts. Well, I, I think that was extremely important. I, I talked to a couple of our freshmen. We, I think we ended up starting eight freshmen uh, in the game. Uh, and, um, you know, especially with our specialists, uh, uh, they were extremely nervous and it showed early in the game. But as the game went on, uh, Josh Brown did a good job. Raylan uh, Noonan did a nice job long, uh, long snap. And afterwards, uh, we kicked an extra point and, uh, uh, we did a pretty good job of placing our, our kickoffs uh, where we wanted. So, you know, those guys were all true freshmen. And then on defense, we started two redshirt freshmen up front and uh, a freshman linebacker who played his first snap, a freshman guy, a couple guys in the secondary, um, and the same on offense. So, uh, you know, probably, uh, you know, not as uh, – we weren't as productive as I hoped would have been and competed the way, but um, – you know, they got their feet wet, and now we get into conference play. You mentioned it. You're getting into conference play now. Looking at your first, now you play two games in the spring, and you and, and now one game here. One thing that's, um, or at least when, when I'm looking at the box score, um, turnovers. You're limiting your turnovers. Um, you, you actually won the turnover battle last Thursday. Um, so is, there, is that something, obviously, that you stress and, and um Looking, looking to even yeah, further improve on. I, I think we're, you know, we want to be a, a plus in the turnover battle, and um, uh, believe it or not, we were plus one Saturday with with a one one interception called back because of a, a late hit on the quarterback. So we could have been plus two in that situation. Which, uh, as we move on and get into our conference, uh, that's going to be uh, vitally important to being successful. So. Uh, we've worked hard on ball security, um, and certainly it paid off uh, Thursday night. And hopefully that, that uh, emphasis is going to pay off, uh, pay dividends as we move forward. Now, week one, a Thursday game, you get some extra couple of days to prepare for Central Connecticut, and we're going to prep for them as well. Right after this, you're watching the Touchdown Club Coaches Show on NEC Front Row. At Wagner College, we have this beautiful campus where I get to know my professors and I make great friends. I've gotten really involved in the local community, leading theater programs. At the same time, New York City surrounds us so I can get internships at prestigious organizations, explore cultures from all over the world, and experience just life as a city girl. At Wagner, I learn by doing. It's practical. It's the Wagner plan. Time to take a look at next week's matchup, Central Connecticut. Before we get into into who we're facing, how excited are you to welcome fans back well, to I, Hamline Field? I can't can't uh, can't stress how excited we are and in, in, uh, to have our our fans back, maybe our, our students back in Staten Island community, and then we're also honoring the 1980 team, the first NCAA playoff team here. So. Uh, it should be a great day, uh, and, and we're excited for college football to be back on campus uh, the way it was meant to be. Now let's take a look at Central Connecticut, another 0-1 opponent. So two 0-1 teams looking for their first win. Um, 
What are you seeing on film so far? Well, uh, you know, I look at uh, Central and I think, uh, you know, they're a team that looks pretty similar to the team in 19 that won the league uh, pretty handedly. Uh, there's a change at quarterback, but uh, they still have a lot of the same players and, and they're all very good players. Aaron uh, Dawson at running back, uh, uh, Tyshawn James at receiver, um, uh, Brown at, at right guard. Those are all really good football players in the NAC and the same on defense. They have a, a bunch of athletes that, that play the game the right way and uh, they're going to come in here, um, I think, uh, in, in a very angry mood. They lost a, a, a tough game to Southern Connecticut, which is an in-state rival. And um, I'm sure, uh, like, like we feel, that your biggest improvement in any season is, is week one to week two. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. I'm sure Central feels the same way. And, and it's a conference game to start our conference schedule. So it's a really big game played at home. And uh, we're excited to go, go play it. Now, from an outsider's perspective, we look at the box scores every week, and, and you can tell that NEC football is, is very close every Saturday. But you've coached in this league for a while now. How close is it really? How does this, is it really that every team could beat anyone every Saturday? I, I think so. I, I think, um, you know, I think the teams that, that separate a little bit, they may have a little more skill on offense, uh, you know, to, to score points. and. Usually the league comes down to which quarterback plays the best in the league, and um, uh, that's that's held true over 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 a while. Sacred Heart in the spring, they have an outstanding running back. So I, I think it's uh, there's not a lot of uh, difference in the talent. It's it's usually at those key positions: quarterback, receiver, running back on offense, uh, a, a dominant pass rusher on defense, uh, outstanding cover corners, and a safety. Uh, um, you know, so I, I think the league is pretty balanced in that regard. Um, and, uh, you know, we feel that we match up well with a lot of teams in our league. And let's go play and find out. Now, looking at the goal board that you have in the locker room, obviously the, the end goal, right, is, is to win the game at the end of the day. But if there is a few things, if, if there is a couple that you look at and you're like, those are the most important ones, we have to get those if we want to win. Um, what are some of your, your main uh, focal points going into Saturday. I thought you were going to ask me, or did we hit any goals on Thursday? <laughs> Believe it or not, we hit two team goals. One is, is uh, executing in the red zone. Red zone. We were one for one on offense, and being plus in the turnover margin. I, I, I think there's a couple things that stand out. Uh, you know, in, in as a team, and this is this is complementary football, offense, defense, special teams. I, I think one is you have to be able to run the football and. Uh, and run it well. You have to be able to stop the run on defense. Uh, and then it's big plays. We have to have more big plays than Central Connecticut for us to be successful. And we got to be positive in the turnover game. And then on the kicking side of it is, uh, you know, we want to make sure we, we field all kicks and punts and give it to our offense. And we want to make sure we protect the punter and, uh, and, and create some field position with kick return. In this day and age, uh, that's a little different because you can get take the ball on a 25 yard line. So in some instances, why push it? You know, take the ball on a 25 and start in good field position and move on. But if you if you cut, break it down to a couple things, got to be able to run ball, stop the run, and create big plays on offense and and limit your big plays against on defense, and obviously uh, turnovers. Awesome. Now we're ready. We're gonna take another break and then come right back here. It's the Touchdown Club Coaches Show on NEC Front Row.
Welcome back to the show. Now we talked about this team, the current 2021 team, but let's take a look at some of the alumni that are playing in professional football. Obviously we had four guys in camp in, in Julian Stanford, Greg Sinat, Cam Gillen, Chris Williams. Um, Julian Stanford and, and Chris Williams on the 53-man roster. Greg Sinat unfortunately got hurt in the last week of preseason. Um, and Cam Gill um, missed a little bit in camp, but he should be back soon. Um, how is, as, as a head coach, how much does it benefit your program to have role models like that um, who have played here before and who have kind of paved the way for some of the current players to see this is what we can achieve if we work hard? Well, we, we, one, we, I want to know if they have any eligibility left and want to come <laughs> play again. But um, listen, uh, for Wagner College and our enrollment size and, and where we are in, in the scope of college football to have four current NFL players, that's amazing. And two of them have Super Bowl rings. So um, it's great for recruiting. It's great for the young guys to understand if you, if you have big dreams and you work those dreams and you have set goals for yourself that uh, that dreams do come true. And, and in the case of those four guys, uh, uh, it, it's just fantastic. And, and in the case of all of them, they all have their degree. So that's even that much more important that if you do it the right way and you have some talent and you work that talent, uh, anything's possible and certainly for us uh, uh, it's a great thing uh, when we hit the road recruiting but it's a great thing for our players who been around a lot of those guys and seen what it took to get to that level so um, yeah we're excited for them uh, unfortunately for Cam and Greg uh, you know their seasons uh, you know maybe curtailed with injuries but I'm sure they'll be back at it as soon as they can. Now, you just mentioned the classroom and how important it is for, for guys to get their degrees. Um, as a head coach, do you see a correlation between the performance on the field and the performance in the classroom? AKA, are your best players oftentimes the hardest workers in the classroom as well? Uh, I, I think anybody who's successful, whether it's in the classroom or on the football field, one have got to set goals, they got to manage their time, and, uh, and they got to work hard at it and they got to work it. And uh, certainly those guys in every one of those situations has managed to, to be a good student, uh, to work extremely hard in the classroom and on the field. So yeah, there is a direct correlation to what you do uh, on the other side of campus and what you do on this side of campus. And I don't think that's a switch you can turn on and off. You are either a achiever or you are somebody that's just muddling around and those certainly those guys are achievers now um with the pandemic uh, derailing some of the um or derailing the 2020 fall season and then you you get basically an extra year and a lot of guys came back you have a few guys on the team that have achieved an undergraduate degree and are going for the graduate degree and i know in camp that was something on the first night that you stressed um, of, of how big of an achievement and how big of a privilege it is to have the undergraduate degree. Um, how much does that mean to you to have players on the team that have already that are going for their master's degree and they're, that are going to earn their master's degree while at Wagner? Max, here, here's if you're going to be in college five years and somebody's going to pay for you to get your college degree, you should be starting your master's if you're going to be here for five years. I, you know, I, I think that's that's what it's all about. I, I, you know, I, our, our players have enough help here to graduate in four years' time. So if you're asked to come back or you're asked to go somewhere else, you decide to go somewhere else and play, and somebody's going to pay for it, why not get the most out of it? And uh, I've, I've believed that my whole entire life. But, you know, a lot of guys, you know, it, the switch doesn't come on the day they start college. It comes on when they're a junior or a senior saying, you know, I could have gotten a master's out of this, when if they were working towards it their whole time, um, they would get a master's out of it. So we have seven guys in grad school, um, which is unbelievable. And uh, I hope in the future, as guys redshirt and play a fifth year, that we have, if, if all our fifth year guys are in grad school. Um, and that's the way I believe it should be. Awesome. Thank you, Coach, for your time. We'll let you get back to the film study and prep for Central Connecticut. Thank you for watching. We'll hopefully see you next week. This has been the Touchdown Club Coaches Show on NEC Front Row.